All right, Andrea, I'm going to hand it over to you. You can bring the call on. Okay, thank you. This is Andrea from Michigan, and every Tuesday we have doctors call at noon Eastern time with Dr. Kurt Fisnick. And we often have guest speakers who are doctors, and sometimes we have guest speakers who are just sharing something important um, about health. Dr. Kurt always um, brings revelation of healthy practices to us each week and options to utilize to improve our health. And we thank you for that, Doctor, and um, I hope that you will decide that you will join us each and every Tuesday. Sometimes we discuss products that are from a company that Dr. Kurt is associated with called Sizzle International. This company um, provides very, very effective products that are all non-toxic, designed and produced by a company whose leader and head is a biochemist. So welcome you to you today, Dr. Kurt, to the doctor's call. Hey, hey, thanks, Andrea. Um, you know, I've been, uh, I've been working as a physician now for um, just uh, uh, 31 years, and uh, it's, it's really exciting to see where things are going. And, and uh, you know, last night I, I, wrote, uh, I wrote a post on Facebook, and I, I basically was saying, hey, join us on the call. I don't know what the topic is yet. What do you think of that? Well, you usually figure it out by the time we start the call. <laughs> and you're right. such a wealth of information that you can just pretty much wing it. So that's good. Yeah. Mm. Most of the time, right? Um, anyhow, so I went for a, jo a walk with my dog this morning at 630. And I thought, you know, what do I really want to talk about today? What's, what's the topic going to be? And as we are, we're walking through the apple orchard down by my house here, I thought, you know what? I really want to talk about optimum health, optimum health. How do we achieve optimum health? And, and really, before we achieve it, what is it? Right. Right? You know, if you ask somebody, how would you rate their health? You know, you get right to the core and you say, how's your health? What's going to be your answer most of the time? What do you get to hear most of the time from most people? Well, I think most people would consider themselves healthy if they aren't, you know, facing extreme health challenges and are not loaded up with a lot of medications. I think that even if they aren't quite as healthy as they think they might be, they still claim to be healthy. That's yeah. Been, yeah. That, that really is the truth, Andrea. That's really it. If people will say, oh, I'm fine, I'm okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and what they're really trying to say is that they're saying, they're trying to tell you, oh, I'm in good health. And, you know, what they're looking at is they're really saying, I feel all right. You know, I go to work. I try to eat healthy. I get through the day. I get through my life without any major issues. But, you know, I, I, I looked at a lot of my patients when they came in my clinic and, and I'd say, well, let me, um, let me have you write down all the medications that you take. And they'd start listing medications. And then I'd say, okay, um, let me ask you about this. Let me ask you about that. And even though they considered themselves to be in good health, it wasn't optimum health. And right. in reality, in reality, Andrea, how you feel is not really a good indicator of how healthy you are. Did you know that? Well, I would agree with that, yes. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of good studies on, on health have shown that you have to have a loss, a loss of 60% of the function of your, of, your, of your health before you ever have a symptom, 60%. <laughs> that's a lot it really is a lot it really is a lot and so the first time it's the right now we're living at a time the first time in human history 
when chronic disease, like autoimmune disorders, cancer, chronic heart disease, has actually passed infection as being the um, major problem in, in healthcare. First time in history. Yeah, and did we ever hear of many of those diseases like, what, 40 years ago? Did they even exist? Uh, many of them, they, they did not, or, or they did, but they just were so minuscule on the scale that um, it, never, it never got the medical attention. Oh, okay. Part of the deal is, is that, you know, we do have people living longer. Longevity has gone way up in the last, you know, just really in the last hundred years. I mean, I mean, you've heard me talk about it before from the days of the caveman till the late 1800s, you know, the, the um, length of the average length of the human lifespan hadn't really gone up much in, in you know, tens of thousands of years. But in the last hundred years, it's gone up. It's doubled, right? Right. So if you can't use, if you can't use how you feel as an indicator, you know, as the gauge to tell you how healthy you are, what can you use? Well, you know, what amazes me is, like all of my life, I've never been on, I was only on medication once for any length of time. It was about a year, and it was a misdiagnosis. And um, so I took this medication until I got further testing based on what the doctor told me. And then, then um, it was, you know, it was um, revealed that I didn't have what they thought I had, and so I just discontinued the medication. But um, I'm con continually amazed at the young people in their 30s and 40s that are on multiple medications. And I don't know how you would consider yourself healthy if you're on like even two or three medications. But I run into people who are on like a dozen to 20 medications. Yeah. And that's right. amazing to me. They say that the average American adult is on six and a half prescription drugs a day. Wow. That's sad. <laughs> and they say that the average medication has at least six side effects. So if you think about that, if the average person is on six drugs a day and there's an average of six side effects to each medication, that means the average person is having 36 things going wrong because of the medications. Heartbreaking. Yeah, and that doesn't take really good math to figure that out. So, so what can we use? What can we really use to judge how healthy you are? So the first thing that we want to look at is we want to look at inflammation, right? Every chronic disease um, has some inflammation at the core of the disease. And, and chronic low-grade inflammation it's different than acute inflammation. If I go out and I trip on the sidewalk and I, I sprain my ankle, that's acute inflammation. That's different. That's different than chronic disease-caused inflammation. And pain isn't the clue, right? If I sprain my ankle, it's sore. I know it's sore. I know I sprained my ankle. And so sometimes you have to do lab tests in order to find out where is this inflammation coming from? What's causing it? And so, so that's one of the first things that I try and tell people is, you know, how healthy are you? Do you have inflammation? The next thing that I try and talk to people about, well, before I go into the next thing, if you do have inflammation, what's some of the things that you can do about it? Well, Again, we're here representing a company by the name of Sizzle, so I'm going to talk about the products that we have with Sizzle. One of the, one of the great things that we have is, is something called uh, Super Omega. And EPA, which is one of the oils that's found in fish oil, is, a, is just a great anti-inflammatory. And so if you've got uh, joint disease, um, you know, you, if you've got arthritis, if you've got chronic inflammation, in the cardiovascular system, if you've got chronic inflammation in the nervous system, uh, fish oil is, is a great product to use. The other one that, that I really like that we have, it's called fucoidin. And fucoidin is just 
I mean, I just can't talk enough about it. If you haven't gone on pubmed.gov, P-U-B-M-E-D.gov, and look up uh, Fucoidin, you'll find thousands, literally thousands of articles written on Fucoidin and its benefits. So those are the two that I would really tell you that we have that I would use. And I take them on a daily basis because I don't want inflammation. And so I use them as a preventative. So the next thing I want to talk about, Andrea, is it's called uh, the microbiome. And this is a term that a lot of people really aren't familiar with, but really what it means is that you have to have a healthy gut. There's trillions of bacteria that live in your gut, that live in your mucous membranes, that live on your skin. And it's important to have optimal health, to have optimal healthy bacteria. And it, it balances things out. So, so bacterial imbalances are really common. We hear people of having candida all the time. But really, mainstream medicine doesn't pay a lot of attention to it. And one of the indicators that you have a problem, you got to ask yourself, are you having a healthy, at least one healthy bowel movement per day? But two is considered optimal. Do you have bloating? Do you have constipation? Do you have loose stools? You know, and, and your poop should look like snakes. It shouldn't look like, like pebbles, like, like uh, uh, you know, rabbit pebbles. It shouldn't look like soft serve ice cream. And, uh, you know, so the microbiome is important. Again, what do we have? Well, Inflammation is a major cause of problems with the, with the microbiome. Uh, I like using fucoidin. It's a, a great product to use with the gut. I like using the, the, the uh, um, Balance D because it's got fiber, and fiber is so important to scrub out kind of the, the, the junk in your system, right? And it also has the probiotics and the prebiotics to help rebuild them. Then we want to look at, you know, your personality. Do you have a personality that is set up for being healthy? It's really important. It's that important. It's number three on my list, right? So research indicates that you have to have the right personality to have longevity. Are you conscientious? Are you open to listen to other people's ideas? Do you have emotional stability or are you, you know, one day a, a crybaby and the next day you're, you're, you're going off the handle? Are you friendly? Can you, can you strike up conversations and have a friendly conversation with other people? What's your emotional expression? When people see you, do, you, do, they, do they kind of shy away from you because they, they just take you as being an angry person? How's your energy, you know, your, your emotional energy? Those are really, really things, good things to look at. So if you have lack of these things in these areas, you're probably going to have a difficult health journey. The fourth thing on my list is, is brain fog. You know, and, and I think that a lot of people just assume that, oh, I'm getting older. It's normal for me to have decreased memory. It's normal for me to forget people's names. It's normal for me to forget, you know, different things like that. No way. No way. It's not part of normal aging. It really isn't. It's not part of normal getting old. Just because it's common doesn't make it normal, right? That's like saying, oh, I wear glasses. That's normal. No, that's not normal. It's because I have poor vision. Don't settle for it. Don't settle for things like that. If it's there, figure out why. You know, you have more brain cells than, than there are stars in the galaxy. And if you don't take care of them, each and every day, you're going to have a problem. And... So we've got a product called Brain Vitality, and, and what a 
great product. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but I'm not going to because I know our call is only half an hour long. And I can spend the whole half hour talking just about uh, brain health. I was reading an article today that was talking about um, working with with uh, working with this and working with uh, um, keeping your brain healthy through exercise because it stimulates neuro you know, neuro regeneration. And then the age pill, man. I started taking that a year ago when it came out, and one of the first things that I noticed is that all of a sudden I felt more alert. Colors were brighter. I saw things in the in, in the distance. I I started noticing that I could hear better. I don't wear my reading glasses anymore. My memory got better. I feel like I've got the memory I did when I was in my twenties when I was going to school for engineering and and healthcare. If you're if you're noticing problems, start taking that product. I still take twelve a day. A year later, I still take twelve a day. Hormonal health. That's number five on my list. That's a major problem as people get older. And they just kind of assume, oh, that's, that's normal. But you want to have a balanced endocrine system. You want to make sure that your adrenal glands are working properly. You want to make sure that your thyroid is functioning properly. Your estrogen, your testosterone, your progesterone. You can have these things measured. And it's really one of those things that your, your doctor doesn't normally order these tests. But you can go to places, you can go online, and you can, you can order these tests. You don't, you don't have to have your doctor order them for you. Nutrients. I mean, your, your, your body is just a, a brilliant biochemical experiment. And if you have a lack of any kinds of nutrients, your cells just can't function properly. And with Spectrumax, what a, what a great product that, that is. I mean, 74 trace uh, minerals that your body needs. 40 antioxidants that your body needs, combined with, a, with a, a great multivitamin like Encompass 360, you're going to make sure that you're getting the nutrients that your body needs. And then we talk about methylation, and I'm, I'm not going to get into this one a lot because not that many weeks ago we talked about it. Go back in the, the sizzledoctorclinic.com website, and you can find where I talked about, where Andy and I talked about methylation. But this is super big as far as like um, biochemically for your body. It makes your brain function properly. It makes your gut function, function properly. It makes your hormones balanced. You want to have it optimized. And methylation issues, again, it's overlooked by traditional medicine. You're starting to see a pattern here. All the important things aren't measured by your traditional doctors. Western medicine doesn't measure these things. And so how can they tell you your health, your true state of health, if they aren't even measuring the things that actually tell you how healthy you are? So the next one is blood sugar. You know, 50%, they actually say it's more than 50% of people are either full-blown diabetic or they have pre-diabetes in our country. One out of two. I didn't say that wrong. One out of two have blood sugar problems. And so if you're sitting in a room with, with one other person, one of the two of you, right? If you go out to lunch and you're having lunch with three of your friends, two out of the four of you, and a lot of times it's missed because they wait until the blood sugar gets way out of control. But really a lot of blood sugar problems are because over the course of thousands of years, for centuries, and 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 our DNA has kind of gotten mismatched based, you know, and, and it's not matching up with the food that we eat. And we live in a toxic world and all these things cause problems. And one of the major issues is insulin resistance. And, and that's one of the leading causes of heart disease, heart attacks, strokes. What are some of the signs and symptoms that, that you have a blood sugar problem? I'm going to, I'm going to give you a list of just 15 things. I looked this up this morning. What are some of the things? Well, you crave sweets or you crave carbohydrates like bread or cereal. You eat sweets and it doesn't solve the issue. It doesn't, it doesn't make you feel like you satisfied that craving. You get irritable when you miss a meal. 
You need caffeine. You feel like you need caffeine all day long. You get lightheaded when you miss a meal. You get tired after you eat. You can't lose weight. You feel weak, shaky, jittery. You get that frequently out throughout the day. These are symptoms that your blood sugar is messed up. You go to the bathroom a lot. You find yourself peeing a lot. These are, these are signs. You get upset easily, right? You have decreased memory. You have blurry vision. You're pear-shaped. You find that your, your waist is bigger than your hips. You have a low sex drive. You're thirsty all the time. Those are some of the major symptoms that tell you that you have a blood sugar problem. Number nine on my list is low libido. People just chalk it up to old age. They say, oh, I'm busy, things like that. And they say, you know, I don't have time for, for sex. I don't have time to think about it. That's not normal. There's something wrong with you. If you have a low sex drive, there's something wrong. Number 10, your weight, it should be, it should be stable. It shouldn't be fluctuating up, down, up, down all the time. I talk to people all the time and say, oh, yeah, you know, I lost 20 pounds last year, but I put it back on this year and I'll lose it again. That tells you there's something wrong. You've got an inflammatory condition or possibly a hormonal issue if you're noticing that. Number 11 on the list is that um, you don't crave healthy food. You, you crave unhealthy food, you crave hot dogs, you crave ho-hos and Doritos and things like that. You know, clean, healthy eating should become a way of life. It's not a diet. If you, if you say that you're eating healthy food because you're on a diet, that's not normal. You should crave healthy food all the time. We were talking about medication earlier. Andrea brought it up. She said that a lot of people are on medication. The average American is on six and a half drugs a day. The average senior citizen is on over nine. So medications are frequently overprescribed. That's right, overprescribed, given to people when they don't need them because doctors will give medications to people because they, they feel like their patient will go somewhere else. Their patients will start seeing another doctor if they don't give them something. So they give them something that they think, well, I'll just give them this. It's not going to cause any problems. It's just a mild medication. Everybody's taking it, so it's really it's not that unhealthy. But really, in reality, if you're taking something, chances are it's not good for you. So... What are some of the most commonly prescribed medications? Statin drugs, cholesterol, cholesterol medication. They now have a statin drug for kids. You know, they show that high cholesterol actually is associated with better, um, better health for your heart. That's right. Better health, not worse health. Diabetic medication. You know, so many times, all you got to do is figure out why is your blood sugar up, change the diet, add some nutrients, things like that. A couple of the diabetic medications are related to cancer. So you get rid of the blood sugar. You don't die of diabetes, but you die of cancer. Yeah, I'm not going to die of diabetes because I'm going to die of cancer, right? Acid reflux. The medications, they decrease the symptom, but they don't cure the problem. These things can cause heart disease. They can cause cancer. High blood pressure, another medication that's overprescribed, right? I mean, you might need to take the medication until you get it under control. But while you're getting it under control, wouldn't it make sense to figure out why you have it? High blood pressure medication in women can cause breast cancer. Then we have the, the new class of drugs that's come out in the last, you know, eight or 10 years, Lyrica and Neurontin for nerve pain. And here's a drug that gets rid of the nerve pain, but it causes you to think about cause and doing suicide. Come on. 
people, wake up. I can't tell you to go off your medications. That's not what I'm saying. But you really should learn how to ask yourself the question, why do I have the problem in the first place? Right? Why? And then you'll come up with an answer. Number 13 on my list is your skin. Yeah, your skin is a good indicator of how healthy are you really. And it's the largest organ in the body. You actually filter more things through your skin, in and out of your body, through your skin, than you do your kidney and your liver combined. What's it telling you if you have adult acne? What's it telling you if you have eczema? If you have psoriasis? If you have an issue with your skin, you should be asking yourself, what's wrong with me? Number 14 on my list is that one of the major threats to our, to our health today is sitting. Sitting is the new smoking, right? We see all these campaigns, and they've been effective, getting people to quit smoking. Now we should start, Andrea, you should start a campaign. John, you should start a campaign. It should, it should be, quit sitting. It's killing you. It's a major threat to your health. Number 50 on my list, stress. Chronic stress affects every system in your body. You can have stress and it's going to cause heart disease. You can have stress and it's going to cause Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You can have stress and it's going to cause cancer. You want to get your stress under control. Go back into the Sizzle Doctor Clinic archives and you're going to find that we have some talks on how to lower stress. Sleep. That's number 16 on my list. You want to get eight to 10 hours of high quality sleep, uninterrupted sleep every night. If you're not getting that, you're gonna increase your risk of inflammation, you're gonna have problems with brain, you're gonna have problems with memory, you're gonna, you're gonna create issues that could lead to Alzheimer's. If you're not getting enough sleep, there's something wrong with you, you're abnormal. Figure it out, find out what's wrong, start asking a question, what's wrong? Number 17 on my list was, do you get winded easily? Like, if you go up the stairs, if you go up a flight, a couple of flights of stairs, when you get to the top, do you feel like, oh, my gosh, I got to sit down and catch my breath? I'm winded. If you're noticing that, there's something wrong with you. You're not healthy. Number 18. Do you get enough exercise? Do you sweat? Do you get enough exercise that you sweat at least six times per week? You know, have you ever heard of something called brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF? Exercise helps with this, and what it does, it regenerates brain cells. Exercise. That was one of the important things that, that I saw with our, our RIP formula. You know, a lot of people, I think they thought it was for muscle building. You Like you want to be a bodybuilder. But really, for me, it was related to brain cell regeneration. That's what I liked about that product. And we'll have it coming out. It's coming back. And just a couple little things, changes in the formulation that we had to make. But Tom's actually... He and I sat up till midnight when I was out on the mountain, when I was at Mauer Mountain, and he was telling me that he's actually coming out with a more powerful formulation as well. So if you have intense food cravings, that's a sign that something's wrong with you, that there's, that there's an imbalance in your health if you've got intense food cravings. So, Andrea, how do you like that? I made it I before think the... that was some really good information for people to consider, you know, in, in doing self-evaluation. Yeah. Of and, I, yep. and I was able to cover it in exactly half an hour. What do you think of that? I think you're amazing, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I have fun. You know what, folks, for those of you listening to the call, those of you listening to the recording, you know, if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. Right, Andrea? If you're not having fun. Well, fun would contribute to health, right? That's right. So based on everything that we talked about, the 19 different things that I brought up, what would you say? Would you say that you've got some things to work on? Oh, I think I do, yes. Yeah. And I won't ask you which ones are the 19, but how many of those 19 would you say you need to work on? Oh, probably seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah, yep. half. About half, roughly half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me? Yeah, I don't have any issues with any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, folks, you know, I'll let Andrea close this out. You have a great day. Enjoy your week. Enjoy the month of August. And, uh, and uh, we'll be back next Tuesday. I don't know what the subject will be then either. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> Thank you, doctor, for sharing your um, expertise and your time with us each and every Tuesday. Thank you, folks, for joining. If anyone invited you to this call and it's your first time on, please get back with them and let them know how you like the call. And if you are interested in any information um, from Sizzle International, that would be the person to talk to. We appreciate you joining us each and every Tuesday. Have a great day. Thanks, Andrea.